and welcome everyone to yet another live class from Heather Human from Love of Learning. If your kids like Arctic animals or penguins in particular, this is going to be a super fun class. I know that everyone really loves the trivia and learning something new. At this time, we are also going to be doing a create a penguin craft during the class. So if you don't already have the freebie that she prepared for all of you, I'm going to go ahead and drop a comment with a link to that so that you can be able to be prepared to build your very own penguin. Yes. Now this, I will say, just as a sort of FYI, it is not a specific kind of penguin, just so you know. Um, but I'm, I am going to be talking about some physical features and adaptations throughout. So feel free to make it your own. Um, but it starts with some step-by-step -step instructions. I was telling... <laughs> telling Amelia I'm not great at like aiming at the camera so apologies um, and then I also have a finished one that my daughter did uh, there we go um, Super cute. so you can see you know what it can look like but I'm always a believer in, in making things your own um, if you have brads those little things that you like stick, you know, you hole punch and stick through you can even make your flippers flap so also an option um, but yeah Anyway, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> no, that's great. I really appreciate it. I think that it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to do this craft while we're also learning. And if you guys haven't already had a chance, we just released the second issue of the Homeschool Quest magazine focused on summer adventures, reading, music, math, and a bunch of freebies. So if you haven't had a chance to check out that magazine, I would highly recommend that you go and check that out because it is chocked full of like... I think it's 92 pages oh my. of amazing content. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check it out, I highly recommend that you go and do that. You can also get a free download of the magazine so you can read it on the go. If you sign up for our newsletter, uh, you will get a copy of the magazine. And this is completely free for you to read and download. So it is our gift to the homeschool community. Uh, this will help you to be able to find a bunch of resources and curriculum as we just started tiptoe into the back to school time. This is going to help you with being able to find some really good resources for your kids. Absolutely. And hats off as always to admin Janet for putting it together. Amazing. <laughs> yes, it is really pretty and I really appreciate her uh, skill in putting that together. Uh, Same. <laughs> One thing I do want to mention is we are doing a summer giveaway and there are some phenomenal prizes, including all of the Magic Treehouse novel studies, a whole bundle of them from Love of Learning. It is a $90 value and that's just one of the prizes. So you guys have got to go check the, out the giveaway. It's super simple to enter. You just sign up for the newsletter and go read the magazine. That's all you have to do and you're already entered to win. So it's like super easy. If you're planning on reading the magazine, go into the giveaway. Now you're entered in the giveaway and you're reading the magazine all in one. Yes. And the Magic Treehouse series is typically for grades one to three. Obviously, depending on interest level and reading level, it can go outside of that. But that is that is officially the, the grade range. And my daughter and I had a really fun time reading them together and actually creating um, the novel studies together. So just a little so fun tidbit. <laughs> Homeschool and made homeschooler made and approved. That's awesome. Correct. Yes, exactly. The the parents and the child. So <laughs> take that for what it's worth. But we had a lot of fun with it. Um, are you ready for me to get started, or do you have other things you wanted to dad? Yeah, I wanted to have everyone comment. Tell us where you're joining us from and who you have joining us. We'd love to see you guys and be able to give you a little shout out. I just want to wait just a few more minutes as we're having people trickle in here uh, because just the first few five minutes, people are like, oh, I got to get on for this amazing yes. class. <laughs> so if you guys are going to be doing this and you want to be able to pause or skip back on one of the slides, I'm going to go ahead and actually give you a link to the trivia slides so that you guys can be able to follow along at your pace. And then if you want to do this again with some, uh, your co-op or you want to do it with some friends, do a trivia class with your friends, you guys have that available. So that's a free resource that Heather's made for all y'all. So go ahead and check that out. Yes. 
Now, I know July is not typically when you would think of penguins, but the, requ <laughs> the request last time with, was birds. And I looked at all the different bird crafts that I, I had, which is not an insignificant number, given that my daughter <laughs> loves birds. Um, but this I found to have the most fascinating facts. So hence penguins. And I didn't even think about it until afterwards that like, Maybe people don't associate penguins with July, um, but I feel oh, like Christmas in July. I feel like exactly, that's July. sort of where I, July. I, how I justified it in the end was Christmas <laughs> in July, penguins in July. I don't know. Penguins are so fun and so cute year round. So that's just me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, definitely tell us where you are coming from, how many people you have, you know, around your device and, and ages. Um, so I will, I will start. Um, so it, it is just me right now, <laughs> but I am Heather and I am 39 years old. Um, my daughter would say I am 39 and a half because why not? Let's add that extra half year. <laughs> just because <laughs> makes you feel better. Um, so that is, that is where I am hailing from. Oh, and I'm in Maryland for anybody else who, um, who is in Maryland or on the East coast. So yes, yeah, a little, a little wave to my neighbors. It looks like we have Amy and she is joining just, there's two people joining her us from Amy's computer or phone. Hi, Amy. I do not get the comments again. Sometimes it just waits forever for me to get the comments. And uh, I'm actually joining y'all from North Idaho. It is actually a warm day today here. So I am super enjoying that. <laughs> yes. We've had some crazy storms here the last week. It's been unbelievable. I, I've never had my power go out were really ever in my whole life as much as it's gone out in the last week. So luckily we are, we are full steam ahead for today though, as far as I know. <laughs> oh, it looks like it, they've clarified it is Sky and Paige, Amy's daughters. So they're both in her oh. account. So hi okay. Sky and Paige. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to let me know what people are saying because uh, I can't see anybody's comments. I don't know what's I up. I'm keep, afraid to refresh the page. So. <laughs> I will keep you in the loop on those. Okay, okay. So I think that we're ready to get started. Yes. So going back to the craft before I go to the trivia, I only printed out for me um, the step-by-step -step instructions. Um, so you'll be looking at step <laughs> I'm try to find it here because like working backwards. You're at find step one, which I believe is the outer part of the belly. Um, and that is that is step step one. Um, so step two, whoops, other way. Uh, maybe by the end of class, I'll get this. Um, step two, then will be putting the other part of the belly on. So those are kind of the first two steps. And you can see in the finished penguin. Um, so the outer side and the inner side. So for anyone who wants to do those first two steps. Okay. Like we have Jesse and Samuel joining us. Hi guys. Hello. Hello. Um, okay. So as I mentioned before, feel free to design your penguin however you would like. There are lots of different types of penguins. Um, I don't find this one particularly realistic looking unless I guess it's, it's like a chick. Um, mm -hmm. However, you know, do what you will. It's cute. It is cute. Oh, no, it's definitely cute. It's just, you know, if we're going for realism, not okay. sure it meets that standard. Um, okay, so the first question, and all of these are true or false. There's, this is not a quiz. This is trivia, all for fun, in case you haven't been in these before. Um, so the first one is, penguins have two eyelids, like polar bears and seals. There are lots of animals that have two eyelids, but... I figured I may as well pull other polar type creatures <laughs> to, as a comparison. Um, so what do we think? And because I'm not seeing anybody's comments, <laughs> um, you will have to let me know. Um, like, I'll give you the consensus. Yeah, give me the consensus. Um, in the meantime, what do you think? Do you think that they have two eyelids? 
I think it would make sense as an adaptation for them to have two eyelids. So it looks like Sky and Paige both think that it's true. Okay. Does anybody else have guesses? And Jesse and Samuel also think that it is true. Ooh, okay. All right. Well, so we I definitely a have a consensus. So All right. Well, I hate to disappoint, um, but they actually have more, which is crazy. Um, really? They have three. Like, just a redundancy, I guess, there. Um, so the third one is, like, their their goggles, what you might think about for the, <laughs> for the second one. I'm not not entirely sure. I didn't have time to look this up, like, what, what the purpose of the second one was. Um, but they do have three eyelids. So I found That's that to be crazy. super fascinating. So if, for whatever reason, when you get to the eye part of your penguin, um, and you want to draw, I don't know, lots of eyelids over it, feel free to do that. The eyes don't come on until steps nine and 10. Um, so we're, we're not there yet, but interesting fact. So if you want to somehow work that in, by all means, please do. Um, the second question is, most penguins are not just black and white. And when I say this, I don't mean the beak. Um, as part of it, like the rest of them, like the beak and the feet, not including that part. What do we think? Most penguins are not just black and white. I personally think that this one is true. Okay. I've seen some pretty cool colored penguins out there, but I don't know. Is that most of them? <laughs> That's a question. What do you guys think? Yes. What do you guys think? And this is another thing that can inform on how you color your penguin how you choose to color your penguin, depending. What does everybody think? We're just, we're still, we, oh, we think, uh, it looks like Sky and Paige believe that this one is false. Okay. So they think All right. that mo more penguins are black and white. Okay. All right. Anybody and, else? Uh, it looks like we have another person joining us. We have Elizabeth joining us. Oh, yay. Uh, from Puerto Rico. <laughs> And yes. it looks like it's Lily and Elizabeth. Hi. Hi. And it looks like Jamie and Jesse and Samuel all think that this fact is true. Okay. All right. Well, I am happy to tell you guys that this one is true. So there are actually quite a few penguins that, that have other colors. So I've listed a, a couple of them here. Some of them, you may have heard of them. Some of them, you may have not. Uh, whenever I think of, of penguin types, I always think of the Happy Feet movies. Um, mm -hmm. If you've never watched those before, you, you are missing out. So definitely yeah. go watch Happy Feet. I mean, honestly, Happy Feet is more realistic um, and accurate than Jurassic Park, which we've mentioned before. So like, <laughs> if, if you want to learn more about the different types of penguins and actually have it be somewhat realistic, Happy Feet is your go-to. Um, but yeah, all, all of these penguins here have other colors. Um, and I just wanted to include a, a short um, a short list. I also just total side note, having nothing to do with the colors. There are quite a few penguins named after like royalty. I didn't, I didn't look into the reason for that, but yeah, there's, you know, the Royal penguin, the King penguin, the emperor penguin, there are others as well. I thought that that was super interesting. So anyway, if you are adding, if you would like to add some additional color to your penguin, that would be very, very accurate. I'm just okay. giving everyone the links to Google images for each of those. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, some of them have what is known as a crest. So things that are kind of like sticking out on the top of their heads. Um, there are also some that, that have that, but and they look very similar to another penguin that has that. And they're totally different species. So lots so and lots of options. Inspiration for your uh, penguin craft, guys. Go and check out the links. <laughs> I included a bunch of cool different <laughs> penguins there. Thank you, Heather, for all the inspiration. Yes, and I want to just add one more thing. So Aurora colored her eyes blue. But check out the macaroni penguin and tell me what color those eyes are. They are not blue. So, um, all right. So next question, penguins have spiky spines on their tongue and the roof, roof of their mouth. 
spiky spines on the tongue and roof. What do you think? I think this one's true. Okay. Birds have some crazy, crazy features, especially that water is birds. True. That is true. Yeah, they absolutely do. I think penguins are just completely fascinating. And I feel like I went with a good choice here when the re general request was birds for the most part. <laughs> oh, it looks like uh, Jesse and Samuel think this one's false and Lily thinks this one's false. Okay. All right. Okay. So we're like half and half is kind of what I'm getting here. All oh, right. Uh, oh. Guy and Paige say this one. They think this one's true. So yeah, we're really divided on this one. Divided on this one. All right. So this one is true. Um, they have all of these things instead of teeth. So they don't have any teeth. Um, there are birds that have like teeth like structures. These guys don't have any of that, um, but they do chew using like the tongue and roof of their mouth, if that makes sense. So yeah, crazy, very crazy, <laughs> super interesting. So when you get to the mouth phase, which again, sorry that my, my slides are not in proper penguin putting together order. Um, but when you get to the mouth of your penguin, feel free to, I don't know, somehow add like spikes well, inside teeth. of it. I don't know. <laughs> Like have a tongue sticking out that has spikes coming out all over it, something like that. <laughs> Feel free. Um, okay. There are between 10 and 12 penguin species. 10 and 12 penguin species. What do you True think? True or false. True What's or it? false. I want to say that this one is true. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Yeah. <laughs> Lily is super surprised about the spiky tongue. <laughs> We're still stuck on the spiky tongue. Yes. <laughs> yes. They said, what? <laughs> I really want to see people's pictures when they're done. No one ever sends us pictures afterwards. And I, I would love to see some of the crazy things that you guys do. You can even, you know, speaking of brads, you can put them on the feet and make the feet move. You can put it on like the head and make the head move. You can have a totally moving penguin if you would like. Um, I've definitely done that before with, uh, with Aurora. So um, okay. Do we have so any sort of Lily, consensus there? Yeah. Lily thinks that it is false and Jesse and Samuel both think that it is false. They think that there's more penguin species than that. Okay. All right. Seems like you're outvoted on this one. <laughs> I think so. I think I'm outvoted. <laughs> and everybody else is correct. Uh, there are oh. actually quite a few um, of penguin species, which really surprised me when I, when I found out. Um, I'll admit I did not know most of them. Uh, but I actually taught a penguin class, I don't know, a year and a half ago, um, actually during winter. <laughs> and I was super surprised at how many penguins there are. So the smallest one is the fairy penguin. It actually goes by a couple of different names. Uh, this one was the easiest to pronounce. Um, and then, so that was about 16 inches tall. So like, I don't know, round um, foot and a half, something like that. And then of course there's the emperor penguin, which is 48 inches tall. So definitely varies in range there. Um, but yeah, there's there's a whole lot of different penguin species. It All right. looks like uh, Sky and Paige were divided on that one. So they oh, really even in the household, they were divided. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> All right. Penguins were once more than 10 feet tall. Oh, that would be crazy. I can't imagine a penguin that tall. Like, they would be like one of those, like a seal or something. That's crazy. Well, and yeah, I mean, but even different than a seal, a seal doesn't stand up, right? So, no, you're totally you know, right. Depending on, I don't know how high your ceilings are. I'm in the basement right now. We have extra high ceilings. I'm thinking to myself, oh my goodness, if a penguin walked in here and first of all, I had to duck to get in <laughs> through the door, <laughs> but then would in theory fit uh the rest of my ceiling what that would be like um yeah <laughs> so what does everybody else think <laughs> so jesse and samuel say false okay and uh looks like lily's working on her penguin 
she says. Uh, so I'm going to have to say that with all the other megafauna that we've discovered over the years, I, I kind of feel like this one might be true. Mm-hmm. And it looks like both right. Paige and Sky agree with me on that one. And Lily says that she thinks this one's false. So we're okay. super divided on this one. Super divided. All right. When I learned this, I was I was just blown away. So um, they were... So this is kind of a trick question. They were <laughs> they were very large. So um, they found fossils not that long ago um, that proved that they were at least as once as big as humans. So think about um, if you've ever seen a penguin in person at a zoo or aquarium. I have. They're amazing creatures. Um, but think about it like standing next to you, like looking into the aquarium. And they're probably like the size of the tallest person in your family, if not more. <laughs> so yeah, between six and seven feet tall. Um, and this is something that has now gone extinct. Um, as you might imagine that we don't, we don't just to be very clear, we do not have like seven foot penguins walking around somewhere, so. <laughs> <laughs> but they used to be that Basketball. tall. Right, Basketball yeah, exactly, a <laughs> basketball team of penguins. Oh, that's fun to picture. All right, much more interesting than my podcasting room example. Um, all right, penguins only drink salt water. Hmm. Obviously, they are surrounded by salt water. I would imagine that they're going to have to then. Like, unless, like, the Arctic has, like, freshwater snow melt. That's like, uh, I could only think of that. Like, they'd have to be super creative. I think that, I think this one is going to have to be true. Okay. But how would they do that? (laughs) What does everybody else think? Penguins and salt water. Looks like Jesse and Samuel think this one's true. It looks like Sky and Paige are divided again. <laughs> <laughs> I love when households disagree with each other. That's actually fantastic. <laughs> yes. Either way, somebody's right. <laughs> right, exactly. Oh, um, Jesse says that she has uh, inf- more information on that. I'm not going to gonna spoil it for everyone else. Uh, and Elizabeth or Lily says that she doesn't think they drink. Oh, a fascinating uh, way to go about it. Okay. So this one is false. So one of the things that you said, Amelia, is correct. So they get their fresh water from um, from snow, um, which is not like Ooh. being formed by the ocean. <laughs> so, but they can also drink from the ocean because, and this is totally wild, totally true. There is a gland behind their, their three eyelided eyes. <laughs> the gland in their eyes actually filters all the salt in seawater. So they're not actually getting seawater into them. By the time it's like in their system, it is actually fresh water. So they have those two options for drinking. I don't. That's crazy. Right. I don't. I don't know. Someone was being very creative when they designed penguins because, like, I don't They're exactly like, to survive. <laughs> I just don't think are, of right? like something behind the eyes, like filtering really any part of what I eat or drink. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, another fun fun fact regarding the eyes and and what they the eyes have a lot going on, really. So I'm so not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I provided you with enough eye related images to to accurately uh cover cover it all um all right so no species of penguin live in the northern hemisphere now for those of you who don't know there is an imaginary line that sort of cuts earth in half and that's called the equator and everything above it is called the northern hemisphere so i don't depending on where you are I am in Maryland in the United States. I live in the Northern Hemisphere um, versus Antarctica um, is, the, is the Southern Hemisphere. So, so Lily says below. that she thinks this one's false. Okay. All right. Who else? What else do we think? <laughs> I, I'm guessing that when it's like takes a while that like both people at the computer are like, no, I think it's true. No, I, I know. The I'm infighting. Like <laughs> The, uh, the oh, arguing that's... and reasoning. Both Sky and Paige say that they think this one's false. Okay. And All right. both Samuel and Jesse. So I think it's pretty unanimous on this one. Pretty unanimous. You guys are 
all absolutely incorrect. <laughs> so there, there are no penguins, none that live in the Northern hemisphere. And there's one like uh, exception. I don't even think is the right word. Um, but there are the Galapagos islands and there are penguins who live there. And every once in a while, like an individual penguin will cross this imaginary line, but there aren't any penguins that I, I'm like, I probably should include this, but it's, you know, I don't know that it the, really the counts. Homeschoolers, the homeschool fact checkers are gonna wanna know. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, the very specifics of this. Um, so there's no uh, breeding or long-term living above the Northern hemisphere. So I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely read fiction books where they had penguins all sorts of in the northern hemisphere and not not true not true i was surprised by that so there are none in the arctic circle so very interesting okay next question penguins appear to act embarrassed when they molt and just to define the word molt it's when they lose all of their feathers it's a very I'm weird say question. That I feel like this one is true just because I have been around chickens and like quail when they molt and they act very sheepish <laughs> and embarrassed. So I feel like this could be a universal bird thing, but you know. <laughs> well, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like if I lost all my clothes just randomly, I would also be embarrassed. I, I don't know. I feel, I feel like this might be a universal animal thing, just sort of in general, perhaps. <laughs> Lily says this is very funny, and uh, she says that she thinks that it is false. Okay. Both Age and Sky think that it is true, and Jesse and Samuel both think it's true as well. Okay. Well, you guys got this one right. So there is something called, and it sounds so like dramatic, um, but they go through something called catastrophic molting. Um, there are really a lot of birds that molt. Not all of them do, um, where they lose all their feathers, as I was mentioning before. Um, but what penguins do is it, it only happens once a year. And I, I, this is oversimplifying it, obviously, but like they sneeze and boom, it's all gone. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just like, um, and as a result, um, their, their prides are a little hurt because they can't swim until their feathers come back. So, um, yeah, so they're like outcasts among penguins because they can't swim due to lack of feathers. So I don't know, man, harsh reality, but that's, that's the story behind molting and their embarrassment about it. Um, yeah, I just, I find that to be interesting that, I don't know, not that they have emotions necessarily, but that this is like documentable evidence. Um, all right. So penguins sense speed through their feathers, their feathers that are attached when they're actually, um, <laughs> when they're actually swimming. What do we think? So like uh, their own speed? Correct. It's a good question. No, what do you guys think? <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm gonna be neutral on this one because I just <laughs> I don't know. It looks like Lily says true. Okay. What does everybody else think? We have the two that are like two different people, so they're I'm sure they're debating. <laughs> they're still deciding on what their answers are. Samuel and Jesse say false, Paige and Sky say true. So we're super divided on this one. Super divided again. Okay. All right. So they can sense speed. It is not through their feathers. Now, I put feathers in here because that is what I would think. Um, mm -hmm. I would have gotten this wrong. It's actually through their bill, which is really crazy. Interesting. Yeah. Like, what? Um, I, I didn't know I, they had a speedometer in their <laughs> body at all. So <laughs> I know, right? Like, a, a weird fact to begin with. And then it gets weirder, kind of like the eye gland thing. Um, so yeah, not, yet another thing on this on this penguin's face that does something that you didn't think it did. Um, so I don't know if you want like speed lines going around it or something. That is that is a possibility for for what to do with your penguin. And unfortunately, I I did not put my slides in the order of like how you would build this thing. So apologies for that. And of course, you don't have to build it in the exact same order. This is what the um, the creator of the clip art suggested. So I figured I'd 
I throw it in there, but you do you. <laughs> do it in whatever order makes sense to you. Um, all right. So yeah, speedometers in their in their bills. Totally wild. Um, okay, so a penguin chick's feathers are not waterproof. I think that this one is true. Okay. Our little representative penguin chick winter tweet. Do we think this guy is waterproof? I mean, not necessarily the stuffed version, but <laughs> the real deal. <laughs> Looks like we have Jesse and Samuel say true. Lily and Elizabeth say true. Okay. I think we're you guys are pretty, pretty solid on true. You guys yeah, are all like correct. Yes. So now remember, this means they, they can't swim. Um, so it would be interesting to me if it was waterproof, if they would immediately like get into the water. Obviously we don't know because they aren't waterproof. Um, so even though they're not completely naked, like the molting process, um, yeah, they, they can't swim. It would, it would not... It wouldn't end well. <laughs> um, so the, all the reasons that I thought that they couldn't swim, um, this is really just one one extra one. So, okay. Guy and Paige got it right too. Good job, <laughs> oh, good. guys. <laughs> Excellent work. Um, penguins have around 70 feathers per square inch. Now, I don't have a ruler on me, but a square inch is a very, very, very small area. A very small area. So kind of like the size of the beak here um, mm -hmm. or even the eyes, I think is probably the best closest estimate. So do we think they have 70 feathers per eye? Sounds like a very weird question, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the eyes do everything else. Why not? Um, but per these eyes, <laughs> what so it looks do you like think? Lily says false. Okay. Uh, I personally think that this one is true. Jesse and Samuel also think that it's true. So we've got like, we're divided so far. Okay. All right. Do we want to wait this for this is so fun. Honestly, you guys, if you guys are enjoying <laughs> this trivia, just say so in the comments. I'm sure Heather would love to know. I love these trivia events. I always learn something new. And it is so much fun to participate. <laughs> oh, I love like that you get into it. <laughs> I know it's so much fun. You know what? Like I get to be able to still homeschool. And so it's like super fun for me. So uh, Sky says true and Paige says false. Okay. So, like completely divided 50 50 here. Completely divided. All right. So here we go. This one is true. And now um, I am never sure how to pronounce this penguin. The Adeli, maybe? Um, penguin okay. has actually in its body and this is not a particularly large penguin i believe they make a, fi a feature in happy feet um, but they have around thirteen thousand five hundred feathers total i'm just thinking to myself like holy cow <laughs> that would be so warm though that totally it makes would be sense. very fuzzy yes and um i don't know if you guys have like a dog or something that uh, the breed is meant to be outside and they have like layers of um of fur i kind of think of it that way um mm -hmm. they're like layered in feathers but 70 feathers per square inch i don't know blows my mind and there's a, there are a lot of feathers on on a pretty tiny penguin so they have more feathers by the way than the famous emperor penguin so that's crazy um, yeah they're like total that's but funny. this is an average so <laughs> so uh Lily says that your lives are amazing and she loves them. And <laughs> Sky and Paige says that they are nearly on all, every single one of your live videos. So Aww, they well, thank really you. like your videos. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, okay. So the next question, uh, penguins cannot see ultraviolet light. Oh, I think this one's going to be false. But I'm not think? even going to be a trick question. <laughs> I it's do tricky. tend to throw those in there. So not out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> I like learning from the trick questions. I feel like, I don't know, they have something a little bit extra. But I feel like I, like I remember them a lot. Yes, 
Exactly. Exactly. You're going to so, remember the three eyelids for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. That is like not a fact. That's like going to be like, okay, how can I work this into the conversation? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which I'm sure will be totally natural. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, I just got something in my eye, you know, <laughs> Speaking of eyes. <laughs> right, exactly. So uh, you Jesse can bring it up Samuel. at your next eye doctor appointment. That would probably be <laughs> the there most relevant place to go. <laughs> Jesse and Samuel think that this one is true, that penguins cannot see ultraviolet light. Okay. And what did you say? I'm sorry. Uh, I thought that this one is false. All right. So you said false. So I we think they two... can see it. Okay. And so... Uh, everybody else is saying true so far, so we're kind of split. Mm hmm Okay. All right. I'll give people another second, and then I will reveal the answer. <laughs> Lily says cat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, okay, she, she, she's done being silly. She says that she agrees. She thinks that they can see ultraviolet light. Okay. So I am surprised at this one, guys. All right. So you guys, you guys are correct. They can see ultraviolet light. So this helps them like find their prey um, because they reflect that UV light underwater. And so this is a very, um, a very good thing for them. And because they have those goggles. So when you think about wearing your goggles, your eyes are still open. So being able to see that layer of light that a lot of other animals can't see um, is extra helpful when it comes to their fishing. So you guys so, got them all right. Sky and Paige says that they still remember that T-Rexes have feathers <laughs> from that, the, the dinosaur trivia. Indeed. That, Indeed. That yes. <laughs> You can quiz people in your family about uh, about dinosaurs and penguins and whatnot. <laughs> All <of> right. <laughs> penguins do not like ice. Penguins do not like ice. I'm going to say that this one is false. Okay. So what do you guys think? They don't like ice or they do like ice? What do you guys think? <laughs> While everybody is thinking, I just wanted to share a quick story. Um, so I heard through the grapevine that there are people who create um, trivia based on my classes and like leave them around the house for their parents to solve. <laughs> so <laughs> assuming your parent isn't here and, and listening to this, potentially something that you can do, like leave post-it notes on the fridge, be like, do penguins like ice? <laughs> and see how it goes <laughs> so it looks like jesse and samuel say they think it's false jamie says that she thinks it's false sky and Paige thinks that, that it's true and lily says they walk on ice so it has to be false all right sky and Paige, you guys got this right they actually do not like ice which is wild to me because as lily so accurately pointed out they like live there <laughs> but they yeah. they really don't like ice um so they i i don't know if you've ever seen videos um of during breeding season and where they make their nests and stuff you might notice that it is not necessarily in the snow now we know um or you know snow slash ice i mean <laughs> it's not like the snow is like the, that fresh light stuff um so you of course probably remember the emperor penguin where the the dad like tucks up the the egg inside his special pouch and whatnot um so they spend a lot of time even during breeding season on the ice but in general because remember there are between 17 and 20 different types of penguins um they don't they don't like the ice they don't care for it they don't really have a choice but <laughs> they do not care not for it fan. not a fan <laughs> Um, all right, what's next here? Okay, so the original word for penguin meant black head. What do we think? Black head. Let's see. I could, I, I'm going to say that I think this one's true just because like I could see an Arctic explorer seeing them out in the distance, you know, like, yeah, I, I feel like this one could be true. So Lily also agrees. She thinks this one's true. 
they often named things that were very literal um, mm -hmm. in the past. Um, either that or after themselves. Like these were the two choices. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, Blackhead, or <laughs> I'm going to name this after James Cook because that is who I am. <laughs> a famous explorer, by the way, <laughs> um, that maybe I will do one day. I've taught a class about James Cook before, so possibility. Um, anybody else? What are we okay, thinking? It looks like we've got Sky and Paige think this one's true and Jesse thinks this one's true, but Samuel thinks this one's false. So okay. I, oh, okay. Well, I only heard the one false, but um, the person who said false, Sammy, um, is correct. So this is even weirder. Um, to your point, it would have made sense, um, but it actually meant whitehead at the time. Mm. So at some point, penguins must have had white heads and they no longer do so all the colors we've talked about and everything um that contribute to the different parts of their body none of them have all white heads so there you go that crazy samuel was the only one who got it right way to go samuel because yeah white head who knew <laughs> All right. Oh my gosh. So in addition to the origin of, of names and everything, I've always been super fascinated by what a group of something is called because a lot of them are hilarious. Um, now, this is sort of a two-part question. Number one, do we think they have different names based on where the group is located? So in the water and or on land. Mm -hmm. um, and do we think that like assuming that part's true, is this what they're called? What do we think? Oh, I probably should read it. A group of penguins is called a fleet in the water and a gathering on land. Okay, Lily thinks that this one is true. Okay. I think that this this seems realistic. I could see them be called a fleet in water and a gathering on land. Like mm -hmm. I feel like I've heard like a gathering of penguins. I don't know, what do you guys think? Are we right? Is it wrong? There are some really crazy names for groups out there that sh that shock me. But yeah, <laughs> I know. I think I heard a new one. Someone posted on our like, uh, "What did you learn this week from your uh -huh. own school?" Yeah. That uh, a group of rabbits can not just be called a colony, but also a fluffle. Yes. Oh my gosh! When I learned that, oh my so heart. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness! All right. Do we have some sort of consensus? Uh, it looks like Jesse and Samuel think this one is false. So what is the answer, Heather? All right. So the first part of the answer is, is true in that there are two different groups for whatever reason, <laughs> um, but the names are not the same. So um, when they're in the water, it is called a raft. And on land, it's called a waddle. So, you know, if we're going for the for the <laughs> oh, cute names, cute. they're called a waddle when they're on land and a raft, uh, which I feel is not super duper accurate. I mean, can they float? Yes. Is that mostly what they are doing? Definitely not. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know. I'd, not aptly named uh, in my opinion, but the waddle is just so cute. I wanted to include this question. <laughs> Um, okay, so emperor penguins. Uh, I keep mentioning them. Does everyone know what an emperor penguin is? Um, again, like the main star in Happy Feet. Oh, but you posted them, right? You posted a picture yes, I posted of an emperor penguin. Perfect. Okay, so do we think that forty-eight inch? Just to remind you the size, um, emperor penguin can dive as deep as the height of the Empire State Building, which is one of the tallest buildings in the world. One of. It's it's not the tallest, but it's up there. Lily thinks that this one is false, and she likes that they're called a waddle on land because they waddle. Of course. <laughs> I mean, that one is adorable. I was, yes. <laughs> Fantastic. What else? What do you think, Amelia? Do you Do you have a thought on this one? I think that this one could be true. I, I do I do think this is one could be true because I've uh, looks like uh 
Sky thinks false, Paige thinks true, Jesse thinks true, and Samuel thinks false. So it's like super divided over here. Super divided. Okay. Well, this one is correct. So they wow. can dive as deep as 1,800 feet, which to me is pretty crazy because it doesn't, it doesn't take super long to get to like pressure. Um, yeah. Like, so it's not even about like holding your breath or anything, but at a certain point when you dive deep into the ocean, there's like a lot of pressure that could, for lack of a better description, crush you. <laughs> um, and, you know, penguins, I don't see them as particularly sturdy. I don't know. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, they can dive really, really deep. So if you ever get a chance to walk up to the Empire State Building, look up, or if you're brave enough, I am not, I am afraid of heights. If you are brave enough, look down and, and know that if you were to jump off that building with a, with a bungee cord and all of that, um, you would be diving the same, um, depth as an emperor penguin. So that's crazy. That is crazy. The next question is penguins can swim up to 35 miles per hour. What do you guys think? Sky and Paige that say that sadly they cannot visit the Empire State Building because they are in Australia. Oh, yeah. I can never visit Australia, so we're kind of in the same boat. <laughs> You'll have to look up a video. I'm sure that there are some great Empire State Building uh, videos. So Jesse and Samuel think that this fact is true. Okay. I feel like this one is true as well. That's a okay. That's really fast but i think that i think that penguins are like streamlined i think that they could do that well if they have to you know dive the depth of the empire state building they yeah they While need to have something breath. going for them right <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> not getting crushed all of that <laughs> anybody else or is everybody voted uh looks like uh sky thinks that is true Paige thinks that is false Okay. Pretty divided again. Mm hmm Okay. Penguin so this... facts have us a divide. <laughs> this one is false. Um, it's actually ac much less. Um, so it's very counterintuitive. Like, like you guys, I would have thought the same thing, that they kind of have to swim super fast. Now, this is especially useful for when they're in depths that are not like the Empire State Building. Um, you know, they can see these fish and whatnot through the ultraviolet light and swim up on them pretty quickly. Um, there is another fact that I did not include in my slides, but that I want to mention here in that um, they actually can spot predators better in the water than they can on land. Um, and so that I imagine also speed helps with that um because they can actually detect when um when a predator i mean not always <laughs> obviously um but they can detect it more when they are um when they are in the water now there i hate to keep referring to this but um there is a scene in happy feet now there are like two or three happy there's at least two um happy feats and so i don't remember which one this is in but the main character wanders off and an orca comes up through the ice this is not like a main plot line so i'm not like ruining anything for you um but he doesn't notice it um and i never thought about that until i saw that fact um i don't know if they did that intentionally or if it just was like a super dramatic scene and like, yeah, super dramatic and worked well for entertainment purposes. But that is likely to be true um, just because they don't detect um, them as well on land and they can escape much better in water. So, okay. Penguins use sign language to communicate. This one seems pretty outlandish, Heather. I don't know. <laughs> T-Rexes have feathers, man. So I Yeah, that's a good point. I, I am oh. just the messenger. <laughs> I'm gonna say that I think this one's false. What do you guys think? <laughs> uh yeah, it's uh Jesse and Samuel false, Lily thinks false. By the way, I don't look at any of the answers beforehand, so yeah, I'm I don't guessing along with all y'all. <laughs> Uh, it looks like Sky and Paige both think this one's false. So we're, we all think this one's false. We think you're, you, we think you're pulling our leg on this one. <laughs> this one is true. 
<laughs> really? So um, this is another one of those things where I was blown away. So this is not their of communication, just FYI, but it is a big part of their communication. So I don't know how much you guys know about elephants, but they actually um, communicate through their body as well in a different way. Um, but they, um, yeah, kind of, again, reminds me of Happy Feet because one of the things that he does is like all the tapping and moving and everything to communicate with people. And that is a way that they communicate is through their, their body movements and the different way that they that they move their heads. Now, I will say though, this is true of a lot of birds and a lot of animals. Um, if you think of, <laughs> my daughter is so great about knowing all the official like terms, but I think it's called a display. Um, and so when um, a male is trying to attract a mate um, or meet up with a mate, because a lot of these are, they pair for life, um, meet up with a mate from the past, there's like a special movement that they do to like, I don't know, say hi or like, uh, I don't know, get to know each other or whatever. They they do communicate through body language a lot. So, um, but this is what scientists I am told have referred to as sign language. So not in the that same is pretty cool. sign language, but. We were all wrong, guys. <laughs> we had no idea. <laughs> all right. So because they have no external ears, penguins do not have good hearing. Hmm. I'm going to have to, I don't know. I, I feel like this one's false. Okay. But I mean, you know, they use sign language, so. <laughs> so do they really need good hearing, I guess is. <laughs> right. So of all the things that you might consider adding to your penguin, you do not need to add ears. <laughs> Because that part's true. They don't have external ears. It is not tricking you in that you've never seen a penguin with, with ears. So. so it looks like Jesse and Samuel both think this fact is true. And okay. Lily and Elizabeth both think this fact is true. All right. Yes, you guys are. Oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> All right, hold on. I think I actually did this wrong. Um, they do have good hearing. I apologize. I was moving my slides around so much. Um, I will fix this before I uh, sign off for the night. This one is true. So parents can actually recognize their chicks calls among thousands of others in a crowded colony. Um, this is again, not something that I included um, in this presentation, but the largest colony of penguins ever um, is in Antarctica. And it's a, a colony of 3 million penguins. Whoa, and despite, yeah, crazy. right? That's like, that's like an insane number of penguins. That's so many. I was thought you were going to say 3,000 and I was going to be impressed. Whoa. <laughs> right. And yet they can recognize their chick's call um, if they get separated. So they can't see an orca like jumping at them on land. <laughs> <laughs> but they know like Aurora's voice. <laughs> Like when there are 3 million of them. So I don't know. Um, so yes, I apologize. That one, that one is true. They have, they have excellent hearing. All right. Yeah. Messed up on that one. And I double checked too. <laughs> um, all right. So the longest a penguin ever lived was 25 years. What do we think? I think that this one is false. What do you guys think? And just out of curiosity, do you, think it's, do you think it's lower or higher? I think that it is lower. I think it's more like 14 to 16 years. Okay. All right. What does everyone else think? Lily thinks that this one is false. Okay. Do you think that it's lower or yes, higher? Say. <laughs> lower or higher? Uh... Both Sky and Paige think that it is false, and they think that they've lived longer. Okay. And Jesse and Samuel think this one's true. Okay. All right. So the only people who were right are the people who said it was actually longer. Um, so oh. although most penguins do live in, like, the 15 to 20-year range, obviously it depends on the 
specific the penguin <laughs> the, yeah, right the specific species and whatnot but emperor penguins can live up to 40 years and there are some african really? penguins that can live up to 27 years yeah so That's crazy right well and if you think about emperor penguins too like having to go through that whole cycle that we know about like their breeding rituals um with the, yeah with the egg tucked up under and everything 40 years of that feels <laughs> feels like a lot it's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, they on average live less, but that was not the question. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> All right. Next one. Penguin colonies can make enough noise to be deafening to humans. Now I am not referring to that 3 million colony one. This is going to be your average, <laughs> your average colony, not <laughs> <laughs> Not the three okay. million one. <laughs> I was just like, yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent. Um, I think that this one is true, just because I think that there's so much noise going on. But then again, I do have to clarify: is this during like breeding season when there's a bunch of chicks? Is this when we're referring? Um, anytime. Oh, okay, okay. So it can be tricky, guys. It can be tricky. Yes, although they mostly are meeting up when it is breeding time so okay so i i think this one's true let's go and see check the comments and see uh looks like everybody thinks this one's true <laughs> Every, everyone so far has responded true everyone is correct so they um and, and again depends on the size of the colony you could go, probably go deaf quicker <laughs> during that three million one if you like were to wander into it um but it is equivalent to heavy traffic or a lawnmower and so short obviously obviously people mow their lawns um so very short exposures are not that big of a deal it's the long-term exposures so if your life plan was to live among penguins i definitely recommend taking some precautions <laughs> because some you gotta take some earplugs with some earplugs some very effective earplugs because your hearing would not last very long um I actually always thought that they they made like such a large um, large amount of noise and like loud noise because they couldn't hear very well. It's like you don't need to scream at someone who can hear you, but <laughs> they, they make very loud noises. Um, okay, next question. Um, oh, I love this one. Penguins do not have knees. Penguins do not have knees. No, oh, this is a good, this is, this is true. I, I don't think, I think with the waddle, I don't think they have knees. <laughs> the waddle. Yes, a good, a good waddle reference. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do they have knees or not? Knees or no knees. That is the question. So I I'm think like, this one's true, that they do not have knees. <laughs> and it looks like Jesse and Samuel think this one's true, Lily and Elizabeth. And we've got a true and false from Sky and Page. So they're, oh, uh, and it looks like Jesse and Samuel actually changed. They're, they're, they say false as well. Okay. All right. So we're, we're switching like, here. Split. <laughs> <laughs> All they right. Facts, man. They have everybody <laughs> divided. So if you are still working on your penguin, you might want to add some knees. <laughs> really? They have knees. It's, even, it's like weirder than you thought. So they don't have knees like we do. They have knees like hidden inside their body that still function as knees. I, I can't explain it any better than that. <laughs> <laughs> like, they, they officially have knees. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Lily says that she meant false when she meant false. Ah, okay. All right. That's cool. <laughs> they, um, so yeah, they, they have knees people. Very strange. I, I admit that that was a first for me. I, I was just looking around like interesting, you know, penguin facts, obviously. And when I came across that one, I was like, wait, what? <laughs> Why do they even need knees? <laughs> What is the purpose? At least the other adaptations they have make sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they need knees. Um, 
Okay. So the yolk inside a penguin egg will not freeze until the temperature reaches negative 45 degrees Fahrenheit, I should clarify, because not everybody here is in the United States. So 45 Fahrenheit. I apologize. I obviously did not include Celsius on here. So you'd have to do the math. It's It would be okay. a lower number, I guess. <laughs> Lily says that she thinks that this one's true. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Let's see. I think that this one's true. I think that they have a pretty thick egg and shell. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I would have to look up, honestly, the temperatures in where they're at. Yeah. But, because I, and I don't know that off the top of my head. So this is a tricky question. <laughs> Yes, I don't know that I don't know the temperature off the top of my head either. I you know, and when I got to this, I was like, I honestly hadn't thought about that. <laughs> like, yeah, you know, there's a reason they sit on them and everything, but I don't know. For whatever reason, this particular scenario never crossed my mind. Um, so okay. It sounds like people have mostly answered, and we think that this is yeah, true. Yeah, it looks like uh, Sky and Paige are divided. Lily says that she thinks that it's true. I think that it's true. So what is it? It is false. So really? it can go even colder um, by 11 and a half degrees, which is not insignificant. No. Um, <laughs> so, so it doesn't freeze until the egg reaches this temperature. And this is why they sit on the eggs <laughs> because you can get pretty cold pretty fast. Um, but the body heat of the penguins and depending on the, the different uh, types of penguins, it's either the male sitting on it or the female sitting on it or like switching off. Um, but that is sort of the goal is to keep it from reaching this particular temperature. And I love, by the way, how it's in halves. <laughs> it's like six, 56 and a half. That's, that's very, very, very specific. <laughs> um, okay. Some penguins live in forests. Lily is surprised by that it can go colder. I know, right? Negative 45 is in my opinion, quite cold, quite cold. So I think that some penguins do live in forests. I think I know of one penguin in particular that can live in a forest. Okay. So what do you guys think? True or false? Lily says that she thinks this one's false. Okay. What else? What do we think? Waiting for more. <laughs> Oh, uh, Sky and Paige says, thank you so much for the lesson. They have to get going to some more homeschool for them. But they okay. said, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. You're so welcome. We're almost done. So you can catch up on the video when, when you guys do other things after you're done with that. Yes. Let me go ahead and put that link up there. If you guys want to go ahead and um, go to that link, it'll subscribe you to the channel and you'll be able to get a notification once this one is available on the YouTube channel. Perfect. Okay. I wonder what they thought about this one before they left, but <laughs> I will reveal the answer. Um, you are correct, Amelia. This is um, this is true. Now, remember, they don't particularly like the ice. So mm -hmm. in areas where it's not covered in ice, they actually live in the forest. I that kind of blows my mind because I do not picture penguins like walking through the waddling, should we say, uh, the with forest. their knees through the forest. <laughs> I, like, could you even imagine you're like, I don't know, you're like sitting on a log, reading a book and like a penguin walks by. I don't know. That feels very, very strange to me. Um, but this is, this is one, <laughs> this is one example. I don't know if this is the one you were thinking of. Um, it's a very rare penguin, um, but they live in New Zealand in the forest so yeah it's like the kiwi little bird and the penguin going through the forest i know <laughs> I, right it makes sense though because new zealand has and australia you guys both have some interesting animals you do yes absolutely and you are in the southern hemisphere so you are in like the perfect place for penguins even though we don't typically think of penguins being in those areas at least i don't I, know in my brain 
Sky and Paige said that they loved this. They said they realized they know nothing about penguins. <laughs> so their mom says they now are going to do a project on them. Yay! So, well, we have a deal link. for you on that. Yes. <laughs> I post the link. You do get 15% off the penguin unit study with coupon code penguin15. So I did share that a couple hours ago, like a, a couple, uh, like half, about half an hour ago. So I'm going to share that again. Perfect. So you guys have a link to that because if you guys are also like Sky and Paige and you feel like you want to learn more about penguins, seriously, go check out this unit study. You get this exclusive 15% off uh, for attending this live class. Yes. Yes. All right, so this, I, I put this one last, so I would know when it was the last question. Um, penguin poop can be seen from space. You can see why that would like stick out in my brain. <laughs> yes. Oh my, I just don't even know. I just don't even know. What do you guys think? What about this bizarre fact? Do you think this one's true? Or do you think that Heather is just totally teasing us? Lily thinks that this one's false. <laughs> I'm just trolling you. <laughs> right? <laughs> oh my goodness. If it's Basically. true, it's, I'm 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 going to there's got to be a way to work this into a conversation somehow. <laughs> like <laughs> I'm telling you, the little post-its around the house can, and making people um, answer the questions with the with the fact on the back. That could be that could be fun. <laughs> I could only imagine at this point what people's penguins look like. Um, I mean, like... I would love love to see the penguins. Go ahead and uh, message Heather with a picture of your penguin. Yes, um, she would love pictures. love to see it. Okay, so Heather. Tell us, what is the answer? All right. Well, like the Great Barrier Reef, uh, you can see penguin poop from space. Um, That's crazy. Yeah. Well, all right. So first of all, they tend to gather in larger groups. Um, but yes. So if here's, <laughs> here's an experiment for you. Go to Google Maps and look for not like the driving view but i forget what it's called like the terrain view or something along mm -hmm. those lines satellite view there you go oh uh, i guess here we go satellite images and try to find some penguin poop where you know where you know they they live like i would i would look for a place with some <gasps> contrast like like antarctica um and see if you can <laughs> uh words you never thought you'd say and see if you could find penguin poop um, I Lily would... says, wow, lots of exclamation marks. I know, <laughs> mind blown. <laughs> so if yes. you guys want to, to challenge your friends to take the trivia challenge with you, I went ahead and put a link to the slides so that you guys have those available for free. Super fun, super fun <laughs> trivia today. And we also have the freebie and that's only going to be available for how much longer? The freebie is available through tomorrow. Um, and okay. I'm actually going to take the presentation down in about a week. So, um, okay, so yeah, move on both of those. stuff. Yes. And exactly. uh, be sure to go and grab that penguin unit study. Because if you're excited about penguins right now, there's a whole lot more for you to be able to learn and do. Yes. And I will say one more thing. I know that there were lots of requests for lots of different types of animals. So unless someone has like a major objection to doing another animal, that's what I was planning to do next month. So a different animal, obviously. And I'm not even going to choose a bird. I'll, I'll choose something different. Um, but there are lots of really, really fun animals out there. So I will. Well, and I think we all know that Lily wants to vote for a cat. <laughs> I love big cats, Lily. So it will likely be um, a big cat. I can make that happen. I, can I have a friend. I have a friend in real life whose kid is obsessed with cats as well. She actually has a homestead and she dreams of running a cat sanctuary as a grown-up. So I will be sure to invite her because she would be thrilled. <laughs> um, quick fun fact: Aurora's first word was kitty, and she used to sing. Oh like every song to the tune of meow meow. So it'd be like um, school on the bus, but with only meows. <laughs> so in oh, addition to birds, cute. she also loves cats. So. <laughs> okay, let me go and grab a link for you guys. Um, I'm gonna go grab a link for the next live class. Go ahead, you guys can go ahead and RSVP so that you can be able to have access to that as soon as the freebie is available. You want to RSVP now? Yeah. So that you get can be able to get that update. 
get in on that for sure. <laughs> Thank you so much, Heather, for this super fun class. I can't wait to tell everyone about the new penguin facts that I know. I'm sure everyone feels the same. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I super enjoy this time every single month. <laughs> All right. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Bye.